All right, so in this video, I want to analyze our data by the area. So I'm gonna start using that community area column. If I go to manage this one to analyze this data, but I don't want this 24, the numbers. I want to first start by getting the actual community area name. So first I'm gonna go and find where we can map the numbers to the community area. We need to find the data. And let's see if we can find that. Usually if they have this thing here, if I open this community area column, see it says indicates the community area, uh, 77 community areas, and you can find it here. So they have a data set for this. That's awesome. We don't have to search Google for this. Maybe we have to just use this. See, there's the table. There it is. It gives us a table view which seems to have the name of the community and the area number. So let's go ahead and export this. So I'm going to do export. This one is probably it, CSV. Save this. Now this should be in that folder. So if I go back here, see there's that. I'm just going to leave it as is, go back to Excel. I already have uh, Power Pivot view loaded. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get this connection to here too from other sources. Scroll all the way down, text file again. It was a CSV. Next, I'm gonna browse and find that file. So again, it seems like the first row is column headers. I'm gonna check this box. Area number, area number. Why do we have two of them? This is a small set of data. So I'm not really worried about excluding a lot of columns, even though we probably should. So I'm going to hit finish on this. See 77 rows, close that. That's going to load it. See as a second connection here, we have the first one here on the left as a tab. Now I have this area number and I have the community. So we need to match these area numbers right here with our area numbers over here. Now I'm gonna check the data type for both of this. This is a whole number for this. This is not that one, this one. A whole number for that one too, so that's good. I'm gonna create a relationship between these two tables. Go under design, create relationship. So the first one, it's gonna be the big data table and the second one is going to be our second table. So from the first one, I'm going to take the community area column and I'm going to match it with this area number column. That's pretty much it. I'm going to press OK. Good. So that went well, apparently. Let's go check this out. So now if I go back to Excel, Actually, I should have created another pivot table. I'm going to go back to manage, create another pivot table, hit OK. So now because we have a relationship between these two tables, I should be able to again go grab the year, put it in values, right click, value field settings, switch this to count, number format should be a number with no decimal places, comma separator. I need okay, okay. That gives us the number of rows. So about 7 million. So if I take this community area column, put it in rows, it's gonna give us the community area and the number of crimes in that community area. Apparently we have some blanks and zeros, which we'll probably have to deal with. I'm not sure why we have them. It might be in some years we haven't been tracking those. Let's try to break this down by year and take a look. So if I go under columns as a year, let's see, 2001, we have a lot of those. See, as we go forward, there is less and less when community area is not recorded. So that's fine, I can live with this, but I don't want this community area numbers. So I'm going to remove this and go back to that secondary table that we just connected to this and get the community name, which I believe was called community. This should be it. 
So now we have community names listed here, and some of which, see, are not. I don't care about those blanks, so I'm gonna remove them out of here. So I'm gonna say label does not equal to blank, which is basically nothing. So that should clear that. We're gonna remove this year for now. So this should be our list of total crimes for all those years by community area. As you can see, some of them are a lot higher than others. So if we right click and sort this largest to smallest, see these are the communities with the highest crime rate on top. And then it will decrease as we scroll down. So that's pretty good. Now let's see if we can put this on the map. So if I go under insert, see there is this maps. We have the map type. And if I roll over it, see it gives us what type of data it can use. So we can use country, state, postal code. So the zip code. So if we had zip codes for each one of these areas, we should be able to put it on a chart, like on a map. So let me see where I'm gonna find that information. So after a Google search, I got to this blog and that gives us this. So that's the Chicago data guy. So that's Rob Perel. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right. That's where I'm finding this information. I'm gonna follow this link. Apparently that takes me to a Google sheet where we have see the community area mapped to a zip code. So that's excellent information for us. I'm just gonna try to grab this data from here. Copy that. Go back to Excel for a second. Open a new worksheet. And I'm gonna paste that here. Remove all this formatting. So I'm gonna go home, clear, clear formats. This has the community area here, zip code here. And as you can see, there are multiple zip codes matching each community area. And using this, I'm not gonna know which one it is. So I'm just gonna have to live with one of those zip codes. So I'll just grab the first one in the list here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna first convert this whole thing to a table. I'm gonna go insert table. It has headers on top, it does. I'm gonna press okay. So that's gonna convert it to table, table design. We're gonna name this table. I'm gonna call this zip code data. And again, we'll rename this worksheet as well. Now again, because of that situation that we have multiple matching each one of these, I want to create another one that will just have one and one relationship. So I'm gonna just copy and paste this over here. And that creates another table I'm gonna call it zip code data one. And here I'm just gonna remove the duplicates out of this data. And I'm just gonna use this first column to remove my duplicates. So that will just keep the first zip code on top for each one. So now it says 77 unique values remain. So assuming we had 77 area codes that should be correct. Now let's go check. Do we have 77 here? So count 77 looks good. So that's matching. I'm gonna rename this report by community area. And now we have, so because I converted this to a table, this table that's called zip code data, uh, whatever this is one, we should be able to go to power pivot and add this to data model. And now I have this in our power pivot view. Now again, I'm gonna make sure that this column is a whole number data type, which it is. Now I'm gonna create a relationship between our main table and this new zip code data table. I'm gonna use that column here and this community area column here to map those zip codes to my community areas, press okay. So now this should allow me to go under home, create another pivot table. 
And now I'm gonna start by, again, just putting the year in values, right click value field settings, switch this to count, change my number format. Press okay, okay here too. Now I'm gonna go to this new table that we should have connected to this and take the zip code and move it to rows. And now we have our count by zip code. And again, this is not gonna be exactly accurate because I was able to map this to one of the zip codes in that community area, but that should be good enough. So I'm gonna remove the blanks out of here. And again, I'll do it by using a rule, label filters, does not equal to, leave it blank, hit okay. So now we should just have some sort of number broken down by zip code. So now because we have a zip code, we should be hopefully be able to make a map. So it says you cannot do this when you have a pivot table. So now we have to change our data to not be in a pivot table. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna copy the zip codes from here and paste them to the side like this. I'm gonna rename this to zip codes. And here I want to get the total. And that should be the number coming from here. So I'm gonna do an equal sign and click on this number and we can see it does this get pivot data function to get the number. And one of those is this item thing. See, it includes that zip code 6007. And this is just text that includes that text in there. So if I could link that to this, that should also work. So here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little concatenation. I'm gonna remove that zip code, close the quotation and do an ampersand to concatenate. Then I'm gonna add this zip code and concatenate again and then open quotation to get back to my string. Hit enter and that should get me that same number from here. And what this is gonna allow me to do if I drag this down, it's just gonna refer to this other zip code, which should get me basically the totals from that particular pivot table. So now I have it linked to this and hopefully that should allow me now to create a map out of this. So first I'm gonna just convert this to a table, insert table. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna rename this, I'm gonna call it zip code summary from pivot, hit enter. That's the name of this table. Now we should be able to go under insert and try to create a map. Okay, needs to be sent to Bing, accept. So that did what it's supposed to do in the state of Illinois but we really need like this area where we have Chicago instead of the whole state. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click on this chart area and go under format data series. See, we have map area, which is automatic right now. So we have this option only regions with data. Let's see what it gets us. Okay, so that's better. So now we get to Chicago area. Would be nice if we could see the rest of the map in a background. But for now, I'm just gonna add some labels. So I guess show all would be all the zip codes there, which doesn't really fit on my screen. Then the color. So I'll go highest value, which would be the most number of crimes to red. And the lowest number should go to guess we'll go white or maybe a little grayish like this. And we can go more colors and kind of get more fancy. So we're getting this empty areas here and there. That's because that was probably a part of that same community area, but because we attributed that whole community area to one of the zip codes, it's kind of putting all of that at one. But that gives us an overall understanding where we have the highest crimes and where we have the lowest. So I can't seem to have a way to add the rest of the map here. So we could probably just do a background map and put this on top if we really wanted to get this right. 
So because this whole thing works with the Bing engine, I'm just gonna go get this. Take a screenshot of this. Paste that over here. I'm gonna put this on the side like this. Try to bring this map next to it. So I need this map to be on top of the picture. So I'll go to format and bring forward. And I also want to have no background for this, so no fill. The map in the background is too big, so I'm gonna just make that a lot smaller. Just trying to get like this line to match up with this somehow. All right, so now I should be able to add a slicer to this. And I'll go by year. And I have the slicer attached to the power pivot, but because these cells from my table are linked to it, it should kind of work all together. So if we filter this to, let's say 2018, see that should give us this highlighting for 2018 with the highest to lowest crime rates, 2017, 2016. As you can see the areas with highest crime rates seem to be the same. And again, we could add some more slicers to this. So I could add to this a slicer that will show us a type of crime. So if we try gambling, See, we have our highlighting, so it shows on the map. If we do homicide, that should highlight those areas. Vehicle theft, drug-related crimes. So you can see there are some differences. Now we can filter by different types and see the results on the map. Not the prettiest looking map. Probably could be done better if we use something like Google Maps. But for a quick one, this works pretty well. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.